Hello, my favorite diabetics. Now, I haven't made a diabetic video in quite some time. Sorry about that. But I wanted to make this video because even though I'm not a doctor, I am not a psychiatrist, I have not been technically diagnosed with depression, and um, so I'm not claiming that um, I have that diagnosis. But as you well know, um, di depression is tied in with diabetes type 2. Um, I don't know about type 1, but probably as well. So it is something that we deal with even if we haven't, you know, um, been specifically diagnosed. I know uh, that I need to go to the doctor about it and uh, get diagnosed and possibly be put on pills. More medicine! Uh, I don't want more medicine. But, oh well. I know that's something I need to do. I haven't done it yet. But we're specifically talking about how the depression that we as diabetics deal with impacts our ability to take care of ourselves and our diabetes. Because it does. I know that it is now recently impacted my ability to deal with my diabetes on a day-to-day -day basis um, drastically, really. So that's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to tell you about what's been going on with me. Um, so maybe, just maybe, I mean, I, I don't have any kind of solutions, but I thought maybe making this video might at least make you feel if you're in the same position like you know you're not alone you're not the only one you're not going crazy this is a thing this is um basically just kind of give you a sense and a feel of camaraderie of some kind even if it is a unfortunate camaraderie so let's get on with this all right so a few months ago um in november it's march now uh, I went to the doctor and my numbers were so good. My A1C was practically in the normal place. It was practically non-diabetic. So I was doing excellent. I've been doing excellent. I was to the point, we talked about it, I was to the point where we were going to wait uh, till my next A1C and see how well it was and if it was still, because by that time we were expecting it would drop down into the non-diabetic area and then we would basically you know get into the process of getting me off meds altogether since I was being able to take care of myself and my diabetes you know with diet alone I got into the point because I'm on insulin I got into the point where I still took my my daily dose my slow acting uh, but I was pretty much never taking my fast acting I didn't need it my numbers were good. They just kept getting better. So it was just, I was like, awesome. This is awesome. I was so proud of myself. Just so immensely proud of myself. Then the end of the month came and we realized that I'd been spending a lot of money on food. And that I had to stop doing that. It was we came at the end of the month and we didn't have any money. I mean, we only had a few bucks to last us the last couple weeks of the month. And, because there was other things I had to spend money on that month. Uh, the eye situation. I'm going to the eye doctor to deal with uh, what's going on with the blurriness in my, well, the inability to see out of this eye correctly. And, which is still going on, but anyways. So we, we basically ran out of money that month. And because of that, it started the, the depression. And the fact that at that point in time, after finding out that, you know, yeah, I am just a few months away from being off meds altogether, I was going to have to stop what I was doing. And I knew that, you know, I could probably figure out a way, monetarily, to spend way less money on food and still be doing correctly with my diabetes. But, like I said, the depression started. And it really started freaking me out because I didn't have insurance. And 
I was on my last bottle of uh, my slow-acting insulin. And if anybody else takes insulin, you know just how expensive insulin is. So I knew that after that bottle of insulin was gone, I would not be able to afford to buy any more insulin. Um, maybe that is what helped me um, get to the point where, like, okay, I gotta control this because I'm not gonna be able to afford the medicine anyways. So I'm gonna have to get this under control. But the realization that um, that was all at stake, it, it affected me. And I started getting very, very depressed. And things just kind of snowballed from there. I started on my own, you know, lowering the dose of insulin just because, you know, I was about to run out and I wanted to make it last as long as I could and see if I could, you know, get to the point where um, I didn't need it at all. I ran out altogether before I got to that point. And because of the depression, when I'm depressed, I don't know about you, but when I personally am depressed, food, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in food. Uh, it's usually, you know, uh, a good sign to me that I'm about to get into a downward slope when I start uh, getting to the point where I don't feel like eating. And I got into there and I couldn't really eat much anyways um, because of money. So it just kept getting worse and kept getting worse and I kept getting more and more depressed. Um, if you were here from uh, our Facebook uh, group, you know that I kind of just stopped being involved. I've stopped doing stuff. And it was because I was depressed. I didn't want to deal with it. I didn't want to deal with the diabetes. So, even though I've got the issues here of money um, with buying food and running out of medication, which I'd already discussed with my doctor because um, I had heard that you could get uh, Metaform free from certain pharmacies. And he said, yes, you can. And, you know, uh, once you run out of your insulin, we can, if you're still on, we can just switch you over to Metaform. I'm like, okay, cool. So even though I knew, I knew that I could, you know, still get some meds and for free, uh, I knew that with some work and planning, I could work around the money issue when it came to the food. But because of that des depression, I, I just, I didn't want to deal with it. Did not want to deal with it at all. Didn't want to talk to anybody about it. Didn't want to face the issues that were going on. Didn't want to eat. So basically, the depression self-sabotages. Even though, yes, there were other things causing issue with my ability to take care of myself with the diabetes, they were all still doable. There were still workarounds. There were still options with a little bit of effort. But because, like I said, because of the depression, I did nothing. I never called my doctor. Never made the appointment for my next three months to get my new blood test um, and see him and get on Metaform. I didn't want to deal with it. I knew my numbers were going to be bad and I was depressed about that. And I knew my A1C was going to be up and I'd be like, you know, embarrassing as hell since I would just went from almost being off meds to all of a sudden no you're not going to be off meds. I was a little scared of the metaphor because I'd heard a bunch of you know people complain about side effects and you know I'm on a number of meds but I haven't had any issues with side effects except for one that I'm not taking anymore. So I was a little scared about that but now I've heard a bunch of good things about Metaform as well, so now I'm not so scared. Though really, I've let it all go. And yes, part of me is like, it's my fault. 
And yeah, it kind of is. It kind of is, but it's the depression's fault. Now, whether the depression is specifically because of being type 2 diabetic, um, so like I said, I'm not a doctor, I don't know, but I, you know, what actually does to cause us to have these issues, um, or if it actually does do anything to cause us to have these issues, or what the actual correlation is, um, I know from people I talk to that this is a common issue for us all. It is definitely a sabotaging son of a bitch. I know that if I didn't get into the deep depression, I'd be fine. My numbers would be fine. I now thank God coming out of the depression. It's slow. It's, it's been a few months. Um, because, yeah, everything just compounds on itself. And just the simple, you know, not eating, just the simple not eating well makes the depression worse. So I guess it's a snowball effect, and it all just accumulates to screw you over. But like I said, I'm coming out of it because of a uh, wonderful person who um, took Lantus as well and got changed to a different medication. She had two left, two uh, pens left over, insulin pens that she no longer needed, and she sent them to me. So, I've got the Lantus. I've got that now. And um, I've started taking it again. So that will help. Um, I'm still having the issues with food. Mostly because, because I was depressed. My kitchen is shit. It's just a mess. And which doesn't help at all. You always eat better when your kitchen is ready to go. Since mine's not ready to go and I'm too depressed to get off my butt and do it, that's taking a little bit longer. But like I said, I'm getting better. I'm coming out of it. And I've attempted to make my uh, appointments with my doctor. Just gonna have to face up to it. My doctor, thankfully, is a pretty cool guy and uh, not a judgmental jerk, like some doctors are. So I know he's not going to judge me. I know he's okay. So I'm just going to face up to it. I haven't been able to make the appointments yet because of the office. They have to call me back again. Ugh. Anyways, there's always something. There is always something, isn't there? But I, I'm, like I said, I'm coming out of the depression, but it, it really really, really made me realize just how much the depression affects us and just how much it self-sabotages our recovery. Well, not really recovery, but our ability to control the diabetes. I feel a bit ashamed that I let it happen. But we have to realize that this isn't a choice. Having the diabetes isn't a choice. Having depression isn't a choice. It grabs a hold of you and doesn't let go. So we have to give ourselves a break and realize that there very well could be times where it grabs hold of us and drags us down and ruins the strives that we've made. But we just have to realize that and get past it and start over. So whether whatever hiccup you have with your diabetes, with controlling it and keeping it in good measure, just realize that you're not dead. You can move on, get past it, and get back on track. And that's what I'm trying to do. Hopefully, at some point in time, my stubbornness and uh, fear 
and just avoidance of the depression issue. Um, hopefully I will at some point in time get past that and um, get on some meds for that. And maybe, because I've heard from other diabetics that are on depression meds, um, even if it takes them a while to get the right meds, to figure out what meds are right for them, that it helps them greatly. So hopefully I will take care of that soon. And hopefully it will help. Because I really don't want this to happen again. The pride I felt is gone. And it's just left me with embarrassment. But anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. Bye.